Okay, welcome back. This is Economics 1001 Fall class. This is chapter 17, the last chapter in our course. So let's get right down to it and get this one in the book. All right. So we're looking about oligopoly and oligopoly is means a few sellers. And we're going to take the specific case of a duopoly, which is two sellers. Meets the criterion of more than one. One we did last chapter in chapter 15, which was a monopoly. So we're going to do duopoly, which is, again, a sub-branch of oligopoly. I've posted the 10 questions uh, on Blackboard. You could download them, and hopefully let's walk through them. So the first one says that the information in the table below shows the demand curve for premium channel digital cable TV subscriptions in a small urban market. Assume that each digital TV cable operator pays a fixed cost of $200,000 a year, to provide premium digital channels in the market area and that the marginal cost of providing the premium channel service to a household is zero. So zero marginal cost, $200,000 fixed cost. I have put the demand for subscribers here. Here's the price we're going to charge for subscribers. And I've added a few other columns, which you would need to add, right? So if you were just given this problem, the first thing you should do is add the total revenue. So I simply multiplied P times Q, 3,000 times 150 to get 450,000, 6,000 times 120 to get 720,000, all right? Next thing I did is I created a marginal revenue column. And the marginal revenue we know is the change in total revenue given a change in Q. So we know total revenue goes from, let's say, 0, 450, so it's 450 minus zero, that's the change from here to here, as output goes from zero to 3,000. So then we got 3,000 minus zero, and so now we've got 450,000 divided by 3,000. We can get rid of the zeros, and that's going to be equal to 150, right? So 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 450 divided by 3 is 150. So to get the marginal revenue from 3,000 to 6,000, the change in Q would again be 3,000. The change in revenue here would be less, all right? So it would be um, 270,000 divided by 3 would give us the marginal revenue of 90. And that's how you compute the marginal revenue. All right, I offer that just to set you up for this next first question here. It says, if there's only one digital cable TV company in this market, what price would it charge for a premium digital channel subscription to maximize its profits? In other words, if this duopoly was not a duopoly, but a monopoly dominated by one firm, what would they do? Well, we know our rule for the monopolist is that the monopolist produces up to the point where marginal revenue is greater than or equal to marginal cost. Here we know that marginal cost is zero. There is no marginal cost of a new subscriber. So they go down here, and you can see where the monopolist is going to stop. It's going to stop right here at 9,000 subscribers, charge a price of $90, because if it goes further than that, its marginal revenue is negative, and marginal cost is zero, so it wouldn't do that. It would be losing money in this particular deal. So it's going to stop right here. So the answer to number one is $90. That's the price that will maximize the revenues we can see here for this monopolist. And let's go on again. It says, assume there are two, now question number two, assume that there are two digital TV companies operating in this market. If they are able to collude on the quantity of subscriptions that will be sold and on the price that will be charged for the subscriptions, then their agreement will stipulate that. In other words, this is no longer run by one firm. It's run by two firms. You can think of you know, Time Warner Cable and some other kind of competitor. All right? And so now they get together and collude. And the question is, they said to each other, look, let's fix an output and price that maximizes profits for us. We'll divide the profits in half, and we'll divide the customers in half. So where would they go? Well, the duopolist that colludes would act just like the monopolist. They would go to this point. They'd charge $90,000. $90, they'd have 9,000 subscribers. All right? Each firm would get half the subscribers, 4,500 each. They'd get half of this revenue, which is 405000 which when you subtract their $200,000 fixed cost would give them profits of $205,000. So the best they could do would be there. If they went further, they wouldn't do as well. 
come back to that. All right. So the answer in this one's going to be A. Each firm will charge a price of ninety dollars, and each firm will sell forty-five hundred subscriptions. The point is, they act just like a monopolist. All right. And we agreed the monopolist would go right to here. Well, they're going to do just what the monopolist does. The only difference is they share the subscriptions, they, sh they share the customers, and that means they share the revenue. So you'll get 4,500 times $90 would be the revenue of one firm, less it's $200,000 fixed cost to have that right to be the cable provider. So that's one and two, all right? Now, let's go to three. It's assumed there are two profit-maximizing digital cable TV companies operating in this market, Further assume they're able to collude on the quantity, again, of subscriptions that will be sold in the price, and they can collude on the price that will be charged for subscription. How much profit will each of them earn? All right, so now they're colluding. They're dividing the subscribers in half each, so each firm is going to have 4,500 subscribers. They're going to get to charge a price of $90. So this is going to be their total revenue, okay? So now we have one, two, three zeros, nine fives are 45, nine fours are 36, and so each firm has $405,000 in total revenue. However, if you read the problem again, we know there's a fixed cost to getting the right to be the cable provider in this market. That's $200,000 that each firm must pay. Therefore, their profit for each of them will be $205,000. And there it is, number D on your answer sheet, okay? So again, just to recap, what we've done in the first three problems is that we've done the monopolist, we've done the duopoly acting as a monopolist, and we've, we've determined that their price would be 90, their output collectively 9,000, and that individually each one of them would make $205,000. One, because they'd have revenues of $405,000 each, subtracting their $200,000 access fee, in other words, what they have to pay to be the sole provider or one of the two providers in this market, and this is their money, all right? Okay, now, that's the world in which consumers are taking a beating here, and now the duopolists are not going to be able to collude. Remember, collude, as we discussed in class, it means when you act in concert to achieve a goal. So when firms collude, they act together to maximize their collective profits, and then they divvy them up. Collusion is illegal in the United States. We have a Federal Trade Commission that works to basically prevent collusion. Um, by the time you get to see this video, for example, you'll know that uh, T-Mobile is being pursued, or was being pursued, by AT&T. And the Federal Trade Commission is going to deny that merger. Because if they did, there'd be two providers, essentially, in the cell phone market in the United States. It'd be Verizon and this combination of AT&T, T-Mobile. The Federal Trade Commission says that would be a duopoly. They're afraid that duopolies have too much temptation to collude and therefore hurt the customer. So the FTC is not going to allow this merger. More on that later. All right.